hour and a half. They're gathering in the green room right now. They're in the green room. They were getting the M and M's that they wanted. Green ones, yes. Yep, green, yep. green, green. And um, uh, Robert, you put this together. Would you like to give a brief overview of what we can be expecting? We have um, uh, again. I don't know who's in the room, but I invited a uh, six, seven, eight individuals to this gathering to speak about uh, the early uh, founding, the founding and early um, uh, meetings and other things that went on, uh, I guess 1997 on from there. Uh, I don't think we'll get into details per se. I like would like profound <laughs> observations from, from these individuals. You know, at the time they didn't know quite what they were doing, but in retrospect, Maybe they can comment on, you know, I did this right and I did that wrong. I want funny stories. I want engaging stories. I want stories. Uh, humans seem to work best when they have stories. And, and this group, uh, I think, can come up with some uh, pretty good ones. And I, and again, this is going to be recorded. So this will go on on YouTube. And uh, some people will be able to see this in the future. So that is my. Uh, Kind of the reason why I wanted to do this, just to share, uh, you know. And there's another another thing. I I I don't answer the service email addresses any uh, service uh, email address anymore. But uh, early on, I got a lot of people that said, "Yeah, you know, life ring that yeah, it's all right. Uh, maybe we'll go to it, maybe not. But you know, uh, it doesn't seem like you got very many people in long term recovery." I mean, you just, it, you know, how, how do we know it's going to work compared to the big program? And I think this is a, a statement, a, a testimonial to the fact that people can and do remain in long-term recovery just through life. I mean, that's, of course, not the only pathway that people can do, but it's just a, a statement to, to, it's an acknowledgement of the uh, power of life ring and the philosophy that Marty and Tom started. Um, so that, that was just another thing I, I, I find that should uh, be uh, shouted out on the uh, mountaintops, yeah. that we are a ballot recovery program, and we're getting more ballot dated every day, um, and we'll get, we're getting more people every day. I can attest to that. I've been here since 2012. Uh, it's been growing, and with the pandemic and the online meetings, it grew tremendously. Uh, there are leadership people here today that were not here two and a half years ago. Sue being one, Mark being one, um, and I hate to name people because there's a bunch of other support people that are here now that might not have been here uh, unless the pandemic had happened. And that's you know, online now is so integral to our message and what we do that um, I don't know how we started with that, without that. But anyway. Oh, thank you, Robert. And um, yeah, I think I think this is a, this is a, this is a unique opportunity, and I'm very excited that we get to be part of this. So thank you. Um, I'm not sure if, if people are ready to get started. Um, I, I'm more than happy to, uh, to get you guys going. Uh, um, come on, step up to the podium. Uh, in this case, it's I a see virtual Craig. podium. I see and, Craig uh, and... Turn off your mic, turn on your mics, and then uh, you'll kind of be coming up to the front as a result. John, um, are you are you part of this Motley crew? Well, you know, that's the other thing I want to do is I was not able to invite everybody. I didn't have email addresses. I didn't even, my memory is not, you know, my memory is not what it should be. Uh, uh, but if there's anybody in the group that um, wants to, to speak up, wants to talk about life ring, wants to share stories, especially their interactions with uh, uh, the first generation, 
please feel free to do this. This, this is unstructured to a large degree because <laughs> I'm in charge. <laughs> <laughs> um so we can start now um just knowing the fact that at at uh at 12 at uh one o'clock you might have to repeat yourself no um any side <laughs> little sto little stories that people want to to talk about let craig start first craig and i worked for how many years together too many too many <laughs> Um, I remember uh, my first time in um, 1999, uh, and I, I have the, just the fondest memories of the old website, the unhook.com website, a complete mess by current standards, but it hooked me it, it, right into the life ring. I knew immediately that I would found what I was looking for. And I didn't have to go to those damn AA meetings. So. Uh, I think I think Marty built that web page, and uh, I still miss it. Uh, uh, but I got involved then and uh, uh, joined the. Uh, it was I lived in a small town in Washington State, and then there was only AA available here. But I joined the LSR mail email list and immediately again, I, I just felt so at home. It still took me forever to get sober, but uh, uh, I finally did in for good in uh, 2001. And uh, I just felt, feel, felt and feel such a debt to uh, life ring. I've stayed involved ever since uh, uh, trying to help out. It's, it's, it was wonderful for me. It was wonderful to know Marty and, and the other old timers. And uh, I still cherish those days of, uh, of, of the early days. Um, <laughs> I'll tell a story since I've got the mic. I'll tell the story of how I became exec the second executive director, the successor to, uh, to Marty. Uh, we were meeting, I think, in, in uh, Colorado. and someone else was lined up for the job. Uh, Marty had made it clear that he was going to step down. And uh, the night before, the night before the gathering, the, 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 the meeting for, for which we would elect the new guy, he disappeared. He, uh, he, he had an anxiety attack and just uh, left. So suddenly we were <clears throat> left without a, a a candidate, and we had a quick meeting of the the board then, and uh, uh, people looked at me because I don't know why. Uh, I I owned a bookstore, and uh, I had talked about I was retiring, and I I had talked about uh, moving to California, and uh, this was in 2010, and. Uh, I had been on the board, and I, you know, people knew me, but I, I had displayed no, no, no qualities that would uh, immediately suggest a, uh, uh, a member of the, uh, uh, an executive director. But I was the one that was available, and uh, Marty put the screws to me, and I agreed. Uh, I insisted on being called the interim executive director, but uh, I lasted about a year, uh, not knowing what I was doing. Turns out that small nonprofits have nothing in common with small bookstores, except the size. Um, but it, uh, but you know it was it was so wonderful working with the people in Life Ring. It, uh, there was almost never any conflict, occasionally, but um, it, it was it was conflict was rare enough to be uh, noticeable. You know, in most organizations, most places of work there, there are always undercurrents, but I never felt that in, in life rank. Uh, I've stayed involved in, uh, because to protect myself, but also because uh, the, the people are so great and their work is so important. So with that, I will pass it along to, how about Steve? Huh? Oh, <laughs> thanks, Greg. Uh, 
I remember that meeting. That's when I was elected to the board of directors. Uh, and um, for people who may not know, there was a duly billed Lifering slash SOS meeting in Dallas at the time. So I got back to Texas and talked about this and mentioned, including that Craig had taken over from Marty and that Marty had stepped down voluntarily as the head of Lifering. And I did not mention Jim Christopher's name, but if people who are diehard SOS people in Dallas wanted to take an inference from that, they could. Well, the head of the SOS slash life ring meeting in Dallas was Dwayne Matavia, who was like Jim Christopher's right hand man at the time. And he eventually booted me from the meeting and told me never to come back. So, <laughs> so I've never had conflict in life ring, Craig, but I've had conflict related to life ring. Uh, uh, I'm sorry that happened. And uh, of course, SOS is kind of on its last legs now, sadly. And I don't think they, whoever took over for uh, Jim, wants to merge back in with Life Ring because I actually talked to that person and he said no thanks. But, but I enjoyed my time on the board of directors. I uh, like Craig. Uh, I stay involved with the email groups. I still uh, host a text chat online meeting. Uh, and I stay involved for my own good as well as helping other people. And, uh, for the old timers and newly become old timers, uh, hello, bees. Whatever you're clasping your heart or whatever. Anyway, uh, it's been good to know all of you, and I'll turn it over to whoever wants to, you know, uh, watch go next. Thanks. And it's good to see you, Marty. Hey, Steve. It's good to see uh, some of the, it's good to see all the old faces. Love to see Tom Shelley here. Tom, it's been a long, long time since I've seen you. Almost 2,000 years, Coca-Cola. Marty. Hello, yeah. Tom. I've never met you in person. <laughs> Semi-person, but hello, Tom. Yeah. All right. Kathleen, love to see you. Hi, Craig, wonderful to see you. Big hugs. Hi, Desil. Robert. Hello. Hi. And, uh, the, most, uh, the most exciting thing for me to see is all the faces and names that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. That's a um, evidence of how lifering has grown, how more people have come in. Um, I, I just happened to be cleaning out my file cabinet and I ran into a, a folder of uh, photographs that I didn't know I had. And it turns out to be some snapshots of the um, 2001 convention uh, that Tom Shelley organized in. Um, what was the name of the place in uh, in uh, in uh, Florida? Brooksville. Thank you, Brooksville, uh, where uh, we adopted the bylaws. Uh, is there some way I could show those pictures? I got just twelve of them. They're kind of random, but uh, if I share my screen, would that work? Uh, I'll try I know it. They have to be scanned. Uh, you can hold it up to the camera. Or uh, oh, I've got them. I've got them. I've got them right here. They're digital? I've got several screens. Oh, okay. They're digital. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) There's CA. Yeah. There's CA. She's signing the bylaws. We all (laughs) did. There's me signing the bylaws. There's Tom Shelley signing. Oh my God. Hair. Isn't that a good picture? That's a (laughs) tremendous picture. And there's there's a lot of hugging that went on after we did that. There's Tom on the right. Bill, Sum- Bill Summers on the left, and I don't know who he's hugging, but he's hugging somebody. And there is part of the voting that we did on adopting the bylaws after several days of discussion. There's a dinner scene. There's Tom having dinner at, uh, what was the name of the place? You, you in the Pines or something like That's that. That's it. Okay, you, 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 you meaning university, unit, Universalist Unitarian, or is it Unitarian Universalist? Unitarian U- Universalist. And uh, may he rest in peace, Nick Austrian. <laughs> okay. And uh, we had entertainment. There's Bill Summers in the back with the guitar. And that is um, Itchy. 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 Itchy.
There was that not is. Paula in the previous in the previous photo? Paula from Florida at the time. Yep, that's that correct. Is. Yep. And may Itchy rest in peace. Yeah. Yes, me. Yeah. And this is. Who's okay, my this? memory is not what it used to be. And there's another dinner scene, and there is a kind of one of the final hugs. That's C A in front. Mm. Um, Tom in the back. Marjorie. What? Help me out here, please. Isn't that Jackie? Yes, That's Jackie. Jackie. And on the right is Shirley, although yeah. I don't know. There you go. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so those are uh, those are my screen shares. And now I got to figure out how to stop the screen sharing. <laughs> Just a second. Um, We're those. On it who don't know, CA is in Japan right now. She wanted to join us, but it's in the middle of the night for her. And she, if she said she had to work the next day, she wouldn't be able to, to come. Uh, I don't think she's in the me meeting, is she? She did say she wanted to be here, but was limited. Well, this is surely something that can be posted to YouTube also and shared for the old timers who couldn't make it, I would think. Yes, once I have the assets, we can put them up on YouTube, on the, our uh, Life Ring YouTube channel. Okay, I'm uh, trying to uh, figure out to, how uh, to get out of the share here. Uh, <laughs> Anybody got any idea? There we go. There I we think go. I'm out. <laughs> there, there we go. Okay, I'm out. Yeah. Anyway, really, really glad to see everybody here. It's delightful. Anybody else? Corolla? Uh, what's the topic? I thought one o'clock we start with the old time. I know. But these, people, these people wanted to start early. They're, they're oh, okay. Up. Well, it's great to see everybody. I haven't seen Chet yet. Is he coming also? He, he said he was, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what's the topic? How I got into Life Ring? Yeah, just some oh, stories. I, I want stories. Okay. I, I can tell you. So, um, and I make it short. Um, I joined Life Ring after a brief relapse. I thought I can do this, uh, uh, just stop drinking on my own. And um, I like the people so much. I joined a Life Ring meeting, three guys and me. And uh, so I kept coming back every week because the guys were just, it was just a nice group of people. But I missed. Um, the females in there. So I thought, okay, after six months with Life Ring, I could um, start my own meeting. And I opened, I started a women's group. And I remember I sent an email to the service center headquarter, and I thought it's this huge organization. And Marty called me after I had my first meeting, and we talked, had a lot in common. Mark, Marty, I'm not sure you remember. And um, I had sent an email um, that the meeting started very successfully. We were like four women. Well, no, we were two actually. And the next week we um, increased 100%, we were four. That didn't last long, but that meeting actually ran about two years. So, but Marty hearing this, that I had started the meeting, he put up on the, on the website, um, Carola Z in Walnut Creek report start of the first women's group in Life Ring. And I thought, oh my gosh, now I'm on the world wide web. I had no idea. Everybody knows I can't let anybody down. So we, I was in. And the next thing was Marty invited me to the monthly convener meeting, what he was um, leading there uh, every month. Uh, I think it was on the third Saturday or so every month, right? Uh, and of course, I didn't want to go. I, I didn't know anybody. I thought this is this huge organization and so many people I would meet. But then I showed up, opened the door, and there sat Marty and like four or five other people around. Deanna was there. Uh, Chet was there. And two other people I don't remember. And he said, you must be Carola. Yeah, of course. <laughs> And uh, oh, and he had sent a letter out actually to everyone. Uh, if you come to the next convener meeting, you will find you will meet our newest convener who just started a women's group. So I felt like, oh, I have to show up really. 
uh, kind of, I don't know, that's my German background, you know, reliable. And if you say something, if you promise, you go, you do that. Um, and there was chat and he found out I'm an accountant and he recruited me right away um, as the future CFO. He called it CFO at that time. Um, so there was no way out for me and I just enjoyed being with the people. I came back, uh, well, I had my meeting every week and um, I just became a life ringer. Then a year late, I mean, with one year, I was instated as the CFO and I did this for years, I don't know, four or five years or so. Um, after two years, you were eligible to become a board member. That's how I met uh, Craig actually. Uh, so, you know, and we're still, best friends. So yeah, this is light ring for me. Uh, there was never even a doubt I would relapse since I, since I joined that group. And um, that's, and being active in it is just um, a very important part in my life, actually very rewarding, very. Um, and I met some of the nicest people I could meet. Like uh, Steve, I still remember how we had lunch or dinner, I think, after one of the congresses in Berkeley. And you told me that you were actually almost becoming a minister. Yes. But you are the, you are the <laughs> it just blew me away, remember? Um, because you were such a, I mean, we had this in common. You had read even more books in, on atheism than I. <laughs> it was just like yes. we had these wonderful discussions, and then I asked you, you know, I knew you were a journalist, and and uh, that you you came from a very religious family, apparently. So <laughs> it, it was just, you know, everybody had a story so wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah. you and me it, and the Don and uh, yeah. Loretta, and I can't remember who else. But I remember it was at least us four, and maybe yeah. Craig also. But I remember. You, me, and John Moretta for sure. So yes, and I do remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I, well, um, it's a great organization. Marty, thanks for founding this and for attracting all these people. You just had a way of, you know, involving anybody. And uh, uh, that's what happened to me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm done. Glad to be here today. After so many had years. her hand up, I was told. <laughs> yes, I did. I had my hand up because I remember the um, annual meeting 2010 in Denver. Um, I have a, I'm, yes, I remember, we all do. <laughs> I, I remember it differently than you do, Craig. Um, it was the morning, it was Saturday morning. The keynote speaker was about to start. The room was full of people um, ready to hear the keynote speaker. The person who was who had said he was going to be the um, executive director um, walked into the room and gave me a letter on a um, it just gave me a letter that he had handwritten out explaining why he felt he could not be the executive director after all. And um, so it was my job to tell you, Marty. <laughs> I don't know if you remember it the same, Marty, but I had to go to you, Marty, and say, well, we don't have an executive director to succeed you now. And um, it was then it came to my mind Craig, you came to my mind as a potential um, executive director, and it wasn't because you had been a bookstore um, owner. It was it was because of your qualities, of your leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. um, and you were recently retired, and. Um, Mar I believe that Marty and I both went and asked you, would you do this in the room full of people who were expecting the keynote speaker? And uh, put on the spot at that moment, you said yes. Um, and that's how it happened. Um, and it was really, it was really a delightful um, uh, annual meeting after that 
Um, we had a couple of good speakers. We had a big audience. Um, we had a couple of nice meals in restaurants. Um, and that's how, that's what I remember. Um, and just to briefly say how I came to Life Ring, I think it was 1999. Was that the year, was that the annual meeting, Marty, where um, it was decided, it was voted on to separate between SOS and Life Ring? Marty, do you remember? That sounds about right, but I'd have to go back to the archives to see if that was exactly right. I know we did have a meeting at that time um, in the basement of uh, the hospital, local hospital here, where oh, uh, that was the one. Yeah, where discussion of differences came up, and uh, after that, uh, the SOS people left early to go back to Los Angeles, and I think basically the rest is history. It was about that time, but Life Ring had been founded already in 1997, so it wasn't like oh, uh, okay. The idea of life ring came up after that. Um, it's a complex story and uh, probably take too long to tell to hold the interest of any audience, including this one here. But I do remember very much the uh, the 2010 uh, uh, Congress in uh, in the Colorado, partly because I was so impressed by the. Uh, the level and numbers of life ring people in Denver and around Denver, in the, in the towns around Denver, it was just uh, amazing. You know, I was used to California where we had a fair number of people, but uh, Denver was just uh, mind blowing. And the, the uh, turnout at the, uh, at the main speaker was, was wonderful. <laughs> but emotionally, the shock that still sits in my mind is, uh, when uh, the person who had agreed to be CEO and to take my place ran out of town, literally drove out of town to a remote campsite off the grid and couldn't be reached. And we were left uh, twisting in the wind. <laughs> and, and as you said, uh, it was unanimous that definitely it had to be Craig. And Craig, you're really putting yourself down there saying you had no leadership. It was precisely because of your leadership that we turned to you is because uh, you had, um, among other things, you had stilled the uh, turbulent waters of the LSR mail or SOS mail uh, email list where there was a bunch of mm, disruptive type characters. I think they were trolls, we called them in those days. And, and there was some negativity on that list, people, you know, hacking at one another, a few people hacking at other people. And you still, the water is there. You started LSR Safe, which was a, a much, much um, beloved list where people could actually be positive toward each other and help each other get clean and sober instead of pointing out each other's shortcomings. And that was a, a kind of emotional quality, a leadership quality, some would say spiritual quality that was uh, very much needed uh, in life ring. Uh, and uh, that's why I turned to you, should have turned to you in the first place. I don't know why we ever went with that jackrabbit of a guy in the first place. <laughs> but uh, Tom. The qualities were oh. because I remember the, I think, 2004 conference in, in Florida. Uh, there was major work to be done on the, on the bylaws. And uh, I, had, <clears throat> I was on the board then, and I, I brought to the meeting a, a copy of Robert Tools of Order, which I happened to get on my bookstore shelf, uh, used a little time. Anything, so it was easy to take with me. And the fact that I would have a, a copy, he uh, asked me to be the parliamentarian for the meeting, and I pretended like I actually <laughs> actually knew something, and, 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 and tried to authoritative when I gave him a ruling. <laughs> 
Tom, we mentioned email groups and you are the granddaddy. You are the father of the granddaddy email group, the first father, one. Father of the granddaddy, I'll take it. <laughs> and and uh, member of, yes. of what appears to be the Council of Ancients. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's, I think that they, uh, just the, the quick uh, CV for me, I got lucky enough when I got sober to find a completely secular AA group within six weeks of getting out of uh, rehab. And that became my home group for eight years. Uh, and I've had the good fortune to uh, not ever in some time uh, have to be involved with what I call conventional AA, which, you know, I looked for something else and I found it. And um, I just a, a quick shout out to uh, another may he rest in peace. There's a lot of dying going on here. Jim Christopher, who had a great idea, but it seemed to stop there. And, you know, recalling conversations that Marty and I had had over some long span of time, that idea that we could have an organization that was self-governing, uh, member driven, and could um, last. And as Steve mentioned, with Jim's passing, uh, SOS seems to have died. And that's really sad, because I think I could get agreement from a lot here that uh, we need as many opportunities and alternatives and places for people to be to stop dying. And it, the thing that, that makes me feel really great is to look at these number of, uh, uh, is it eminence gris? Uh, is, it, is that the right way to say it? Uh, a lot of old heads here. And I feel very happy that as we do continue to uh, go down the dusty trail, that Life Ring is going to live on past all of us. And that is amazing to me. And the fact that there has been such a, um, uh, a an amazing, uh, and I, again, uh, props to you, Craig, uh, and, and, and don't sell yourself short. Um, there, if there's a Mount Rushmore for a life ring, uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to be the big face on the front of it. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's heartening that, that this, you know, uh, that we're even able to be here. And it's so amazing to see the turnout at every, every instance where there's been, uh, you know, some opportunity. I'm happy um, having run the LSR mail list, formerly SOS mail for 20 something years, um, is that it's revitalized now. A number of new people have joined and there's an old guy named um, Craig, I think it is, who has, uh, has appeared out of the darkness uh, to, uh, to cheer lots of folks on. And uh, I think that the, my hope is that we, uh, that we can attract a lot more young people and, and let them decide where we go next. And thanks for everybody being here. This is great. Thank you. Kathleen, you yes. should mention you uh, were after Craig. So oh. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much I want to say about that. Um, how it happened, um, nobody else would do it. Um, I remember you asking me. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I was I on the board. Quite ready yet. <laughs> I was on the board at that point, I think, one term or maybe two, and um, nobody else would do it. Um, Craig got to a point where he said he couldn't do it anymore, or didn't want to do it anymore. And there was somebody, um, there was somebody who was, um, a member of Life Ring who was gunning to do it. And um, I didn't want that person to, to be the, the um, 
uh, CEO of LifeRing and for various reasons, which I won't go into. And um, it's not just you, we all were, right? I mean, it was very yes. tumultuous at that time. You had, um, you had to suffer a lot under that person, I remember. Yeah. Yes. All had, yeah. Yeah. And um, anyway, so, so I did it. <laughs> I stepped in for a year. And um, I just also wanted to say that Jim Christopher wrote a couple of really good books. Um, I recommend them. And um, I found them, I wasn't, on, I wasn't online during those years yet. I found them on the shelf at the Denver Public Library and checked them out and read them. And um, that's how I got um, involved with SOS. And then when SOS and LifeRing split up, I chose LifeRing because it seemed happier. It seemed like a happier group. So that's, that's my story. I had to get out of AA after 25 years. Um, Thank you. Yes. So she was the second executive director after, uh, or third, I should say, Marty being the first. Um, John Owens, I want to say something about if you ever get invited to his meeting, if you ever get an email to his meeting, he must spend hours combing the internet to get various illustrations and various ideas as to how he's going to craft his email to entice you to come to his meeting. He has a Wednesday night meeting and a Saturday morning meeting, and they are fascinating emails. <laughs> well, it managed to entice you a few times, uh, and we were glad to have you. I wish you'd hang around more. Um, oh, I'm still around. I'm still, I'm, you know, I'll have a little bit more time here pretty soon. Good, good, yeah. Um, we won't go into the content of those because I'm sure that every one of them would be considered lifering heresy, and that's my intent. But it seems to help. Um, yeah, I've been around lifering since uh, pre incorporation. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm not as well known as many who are here, but uh, if you've ever heard that evil, terrible, nasty competing organization that has so much money referred to as brand a i'm the one who started it that was a lot of years ago um i will say that I'd, i think i'd still be a drunk if it weren't for life ring i'll just leave it at that uh, i i attribute uh, just about uh, any success i've had in the last uh, 20 plus years however long it's been uh, to being involved with this organization uh, Robert asked for some stories when this began, and there was also mention of Itchy. And there are a couple I want to tell you uh, briefly, if I can. There's one that I don't think Marty ever heard, and he's involved in it. Uh, actually, he's involved in both of them. Uh, there was a, a Life Ring Congress at Herrick Hospital in Berkeley. That was kind of a standard location for a number of years. And uh, Itchy was there. He flew in. He uh, rented a car and drove over to Berkeley got a parking ticket because he chose to ignore, ignore whatever uh, restriction there was on where he put his car. And he wasn't about to pay it. So he put the ticket on Marty's car and went home. <laughs> I don't know that Marty ever knew where it came from until now. Um, yeah, he was, uh, he was a great guy. I, we're talking about uh, LSR mail. Um, as those of you who are around will remember that flame wars weren't all that uncommon there. Uh, and there was one, I don't even remember what it was about, but uh, it went on for several days. And it, a lot of the uh, venom was directed at Marty. Uh, and he was firing back as best he could. Um, and uh, it seemed to have no end until uh, an email came in from Mitchie, and it stopped immediately after people read what he had written. And that was, Marty, you have to remember that not everyone is from Berkeley. <laughs> so it ended. So it ended. Um, 
Sir, that was about the smoking. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of good years for me. Um, I hope to have many more. Um, going back to Itchy, uh, I remember him once saying he had absolutely no intent of ever dying. It's unfortunate that that didn't work out his way, but I have the same intent. And I intend also to be around life ring for as long as uh, that may be. So I have said my piece and I will now be silent. I want to call on Lisa, um, Byron, and John, kind of maybe the second generation of sorts. Uh, but they uh, all have contributed to life ring in major ways. Yeah. Lisa, first. If she's, her camera's off. She's probably out walking the dog. She has a dog that's very persistent and very annoying sometimes. And knows when she's on the, <laughs> on videos and, oh, there she is. Okay, I'll shut up. Uh, Mike, unmute yourself. There. Okay. Am I? I, um, okay. Those of you who know me know, like, I, I can always talk forever, but I did not expect to be called upon in this venue, and I'm quite humbled by it. Um, I, this has been an awesome conference um, so far. We're, we're not done yet. Um, and, you know, what I've heard, I've re related to, to some degree, that this, um, uh, <laughs> Well, nobody else was doing it, so I did it. And 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 Craig brought me in. Um, I was had found Life Ring after mm, about ten years and twelve step, and <laughs> came home from a meeting one day and went, "There has got to be something other than this," and um, started looking and found other things. But um, when I ran across life ring i went like oh recovery can make sense this makes sense like i i didn't think it was allowed to really um <laughs> but um so you know i started the first meeting in akron ohio which is the birthplace of aa um and and ironically and i'll just say this because it's a funny story um when I was looking at starting the in-person meeting, um, I knew of a facility that I liked and thought would be good. And I knew of this facility because my first AA home group, when I had first gotten out of treatment in 2001, met there. And um, so when I approached the facility, they did have space available at the same time and day that that AA group met. So we started off, we, we are still at the same time and day as that AA group that was my home group when I got out of treatment. Um, but there are people that I, uh, that I knew from then, and we get along great with them. Um, sometimes they will send people over to us who seem to like, I don't you know, I don't know grumbling about their approach, and they go, well, hey, go next door. <laughs> they do it different. Um, and, and that's really awesome that, you know, because I was, I was really afraid that, like, you know, it, and they, they've been nothing but kind to us, and we get along great with them. And um, But I soon... Um, after starting the meeting, I was emailing Craig, asking questions about this and that, and Craig said, well, gee, we have this membership support committee. Why don't you join it? And, you know, one thing leads to another, and you join one thing, and then you end up doing another thing. And you, but it was Craig who brought me in and put up with all my questions for many years that now Robert puts up with. And um, <laughs> so... Um, I, so this is so awesome. I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you. And, um, you know, Life Ring has kept that spirit. There's been in the last two years a lot of changes. But it, deep in my heart, too, I believe we have not just, you know, yes, in-person meetings took a huge hit in most areas. But look what's happened online. Life Ring essentially is still thriving, you know, despite the pandemic. And I think it's because one we're all kind of flexible and things don't have to be one certain way and we can adapt and 
and two, we're all really stubborn, <laughs> which which I really adore about all of us. So, um, yeah, that's all I have. Byron, who started a number of uh, meetings in Northern California. Um, yeah, in I, person, but. <laughs> Hi. I, I, first of all, um, I may not be able to speak very long. There's a there's a toddler in my house these days, and uh, uh, so if if I suddenly go mute, uh, it's because there's a a toddler in the background. But um, and, and that's a whole different story. That's a, a big part of the reason I I resigned from Life Ring leadership is is that I I had some personal issues that had demanded my full time attention and and still do uh, um golly i this seems to be a recurring theme uh craig uh, welcomed me into life ring originally i i uh i if my memory serves i i was maybe 90 days sober and called the office to inquire about starting a meeting in an area in northern california that that uh, had none at the time um and and craig encouraged me even though i i was far short of the the six months it says in the in the rule book um he said something along the lines of go ahead and start organizing everything and by the time you get it all put together you'll have six months or be close enough or something like that i don't remember the exact words but but that's essentially what I remember. And, and he was right. I, I think when I opened the door to the first meeting I started, I, I uh, officially only had five months and a day or something like that. But, uh, but it was the encouragement, the, the support, um, which is really what we do for each other anyway. Uh, but I, in, in, in the sense of Craig supporting me starting that first meeting, I, I'm, I'm forever grateful. Um, Robert also um, amazingly supportive. And, and I tried to emulate that in the meetings. Um, uh, that, that's how I felt others supported me. And, and I, I felt that's the the same merit attitude i needed to carry forward in in meetings so at any rate i'm i'm uh, once again i'm not currently active in life ring and haven't been for a few years um and and i'd rather not share all the details about that but uh, everything is is going really well and and uh, i'm really happy to see everyone Thanks. but he wants a shirt uh, well, I just I, I, I purchased it with American How dollars. <laughs> How about an actual life ring? Mark's got life rings. Oh, did you see? Yeah, I can't see it in the background. But uh, uh, Kathy has a life ring. Mark is going around giving this to some, uh, and, and Sue has the life ring. It so kinda, I, you know. <laughs> I'd just like to interject. Byron was the first person I met at Life Ring, and you know i i got to know byron over the years the first years of my sobriety and then got involved with the life ring board and operations and i just want to say that life ring wouldn't be where it is without all the contributions that 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 he's that he's made from like driving all over the state of california to meetings um although he's pretty good at at, at getting others to to take on meetings that's a a little trick that i learned from him <laughs> and i've i've handed off a couple of meetings myself recently um but just you know byron all your contributions uh have had i think a lasting effect on on life ring for the for the positive so i thank you for those and john Former, I'm uh, really glad. Sorry if I'm stepping on another voice. No, I'm also, oh no, go ahead. I'm also really glad to see Byron here. Uh, Byron is a meeting starter par excellence. There is a uh, uh, on the uh, on the oh god, I'm struggling on the on the Jewish candlestick. <laughs> what is it called? Menorah. Menorah. Yes. Menorah. 
Laura, there's one candle that's the uh, the starter that you use to light the other candles. And, uh, come on, what's the name of it, people? I'm getting old here. It's starting to fall out. Anyway, there's that candle, and Byron is that candle, and uh, I'm really delighted to see him here. And uh, congratulations, Byron, on having a toddler running in the house. That's uh, <laughs> really good news. I, it, it's a complicated story. <laughs> <laughs> Life is complicated. Yes. So, John, do you want to check in? He is a uh, former uh, yeah. board chair. Yeah. And um, among other things. Pretty much similar origin story to, to everyone else. Um, got uh, introduced to Life Ring through my treatment provider, and it just immediately clicked. Um, I think Carolyn mentioned, like, coming in immediately, I knew this is my place. This is, you know, these are my people. Um, there's no one here telling me that I'm going to fail. There's no one here threatening me with things and making up stories and, and trying to, you know, tell me what's going to happen to me. They, they showed me how to make up my own um, life and my own history and build a future for myself as opposed to just punishing myself for my, my past. Um, newly sober and uh, newly unemployed, I had nothing to do. So I started a bunch of meetings very, very early on. Uh, went to uh, one of the annual meetings in uh, the hospital basement in Berkeley and <laughs> met Marty and, and that was fantastic. And, and um, soon after um, it was uh, Carolyn and Loretta that made me join the board. And <laughs> um, I think the universal, one of the universal things that I think we all uh, encountered was that imposter syndrome is like we just don't feel up to the up to the task and it's such a good you know training ground to, to be brought in and to be included and to to have that voice and to um, to feel uh, like part of the the machine and early on too was you know the default solution to anything that came up to the board was well, let's ask Marty what does Marty say what's Marty going to do and I remember reaching out to Marty and Marty and saying, you wonder why I wanted to hand it over to somebody else. <laughs> but one of the best things you did was like, kind of put the kibosh on that and say, look, you know, you guys are bored, figure it out. And it really, I think, helped the organization kind of step up and step into a, a new level of, you know, we're not building this around a person, but we're building this around a community and that that really was kind of the paradigm shift um where i saw that when you when you did make that break and step away and really force the organization to kind of grow up or or whatever um and that's something i've always valued and i've taken that you know into everything that i've done uh subsequently carola again inspired me to um she started doing the the drug board in uh, in her county and that inspired me to do um, the mental health board, which I just transitioned a couple of years ago into the behavioral health commission in San Francisco. Um, so just expanding like what we're doing and moving it out and raising awareness and, and growing as, as individuals and growing our communities has been my theme. And it all goes back to, you know, life ring. It all goes back to everything that I've, I've learned, um, thanks to life ring. And I'm just excited to see it, it growing and expanding and, and continuing and, all this new energy is just beyond exciting. Thank you. I did a little research you know, while other people were talking. The candle on the menorah that's used to light the other candles is called the shamash. Byron is a shamash. Yes. The candle that lights the other candle. All every convener that starts another meeting is a shamash. There you have it. I just wanted to pick up briefly on something Don said. And that's about life and mental health. You know, I first got into sobriety in a traditional, not a non-traditional AA group, Tom. And, you know, back in the old days, AA was like, you know, psychological medications or counselors that's interfering with your higher power. I think they've softened that today, but years ago, you know, AA still had that stance. And, you know, I think that's one of the things life ring is good in that we say, if you need counseling or whatever, that's your sobriety path. Uh, I personally, 
uh, about uh, three years ago when I was in the Dallas Metroplex itself, uh, found a group counseling for male abuse survivors. And that's as much of my longer term sobriety story as being in life for itself. And per Carolla mentioning I'm a journalist, I write a column every April for National Child Abuse Prevention Month. That's my part of trying to help out on the bigger picture. And thanks for the little intro on that, Don. Appreciate it. But that's something we have that, you know, brand A for Don doesn't really offer. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Van, I know you want to ask Marty a question. Anybody else in the, in the room want to reflect upon uh, Lorraine? Thank um, you. She might be third generation. Well, I want to finish the, the little gathering here first because your question's a little more serious and uh, oh, maybe okay, should, no problem. Um, you know, pause between the fun stuff and the serious stuff or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I could call Lorraine and uh, um, some other people here, third generation, I guess. I You came in 7, 19, uh, 20, 17, 2016? Yeah, 2017, I um, attended the conference in San Francisco when um, John was uh, the board chair and he was outgoing board chair and Byron was incoming board chair. So that was the first year that I attended the um, annual meeting and I met Corolla and lots and Robert, lots of other nice people. And uh, then I had, um, so, so I planned the um, annual meeting for 2018 in Denver, and that made uh, people, I guess, on the board ask me to be board chair. And I said I'd only do it if there was a co-chair because I was also chairing something else. And uh, so Dan Kerrigan and I were co-chairs for three years. And, uh, you know, that, that was, I think, a uh, um, there, there's a good thing about that in, in that it lightens the load for the one person, but it also, perhaps we were a bit too collaborative waiting for the other person, you know, checking with each other. So anyway, I would say that bringing it fully forward to Sue, who is, is leading the board now, she's done an excellent job. She makes decisions quickly. She's a fantastic writer, and I'm so happy that she's here. So, uh, Yes, and, and Lorraine got a job, so. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Eva, you also came in same time or maybe a little bit earlier? Um, well, my, my I, you mean working as a uh, secretary? Yeah, secretary coming on board, you know? Yeah, that was around 2015, I think, 2016, okay. yeah. I was not working, my whole life kind of collapsed. <laughs> and I wanted to do something uh, to contribute to Life Ring um, and to keep myself busy and to, uh, you know, to, to, yeah, just to connect. Because I think I've always had a difficult time connecting with people. And connecting through doing some sort of work was like a more natural thing than just connecting to connect. Um, so I'm 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 loving life ring and and just uh, um, the whole past two years with COVID, um, how we've grown. I just and all the work you guys have been doing over the past two years, the growth, the excitement, the the diversity of offerings that we that we have on our, um, on our website. I mean, I'm just so proud to be associated with all of you guys. And um, I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you. Anybody else I don't recognize, but probably older than anyone here, uh, longer in life than possibly. And I'm sorry if I didn't call on you. I didn't know. Steve? Steve's been on the board for what, three years now, four? Maybe? Yeah, I, Steve, yes. He has spoken. I was just wondering, I see some faces that I don't recognize, and I'm just wondering if they're from Marty's time, and I just neglected to uh, <laughs> uh, call on them. Yes. Thanks for the shout out, Lorraine, though I appreciate it. 
Yeah, go ahead. So, uh -oh, Can I talk? Should... Yes. Yeah, this is Syl here in Albany, Syl. right next to Berkeley. And um, uh, I was going through some things in the basement and found a whole bunch of life ring books and convener ma manuals. And oh, I, I talked back to you. I talked to you on the phone. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you for remembering. Uh, yeah. Um, I just happened to find you on the website and hear about this convention. <laughs> And what a great thing, my goodness, everybody looks so great. And, and I remember the, the meeting we had in Florida, that was really fun, flying across the country with uh, the artist, she was wonderful. You're one of the originals? Yeah, I came in about a year or two ah. after, after uh, the Marty, inception. you didn't tell me. <laughs> well, I didn't know there was gonna be this kind of show and tell. But, um, but yeah, I think, um, I, I think Kaiser and Lifering saved my life because I had gone to many AA meetings in the past and just couldn't take the smoking and the, and the horror stories. And, and I thought, no, there has to be more than this. So when uh, Marty introduced himself and and I came to the Saturday meetings in Oakland and um, I just love that group. And we got many people who had to, had to come to the meetings for their work releases and their number of meetings and so forth. And then uh, a friend of mine, do you remember Marjorie Jones? She was one of the originals and she led a meeting at uh, the psych ward at Herrick Hospital there in Berkeley where we had some conventions. And so um, Marjorie said, would you take over that meeting? And it was a once a week recovery meeting with people who had mental and psychological and um, addictions, dual, dual diagnosis. And it was a little scary, but you know, I um, actually, my son had been a patient there. My son had been a patient for, for a time in, in Herrick. And so I would tell the clients, um, you know, this place saved my son's life. And, and uh, to get clean and sober, I have a lot to live for, and I hope you get it. So I did that for about a year or so, and, and it was very, very rewarding because the people there were very appreciative. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy that Life Ring's going on, and I'll probably come to to some daytime meetings, I'm, um, I've been troubled with um, bad arthritis and uh, I'm finally getting knee surgery on the 23rd of this month, knee replacement, total knee replacement. I'll have one done. So I'll probably be on, on the chat group uh, online during my recovery. So keep up the good work. Um, so nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can go to Van now. Thank oh, you. thanks everybody. Hi. Nice to be here. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I'm I'm a I'm a new convener up here in uh, BC, uh, Canada, Kelowna, BC, and um, had a had a first uh, interesting. Um, meeting with the uh, Bridge Youth and Family Services uh, in-house uh, treatment uh, people uh, not not far from me. And, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, basically my first live meeting. I, I used to facilitate smart recovery, you know, for four and a half years. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm now posing as a, as a life ringer and uh, went in and, and, and it was great, you know, and it was just neat to kind of see and reconfirm that, you know, generally speaking, everybody, knows uh you know so i i introduced the the a and the s concept and uh, which i really enjoy gives a good uh you know imagery to it and um uh you know by the end of it all these these ladies you know were graduating very soon and uh and they they knew the problem and they knew the solution and uh as as many do but uh i tried to uh, remind them that it's you know about uh, how, how the rubber hits the road when when you're outside up against uh, people places things and situations that that really counts you know so um, I'm, I'm excited to uh, to be here, and I just wanted to ask uh, 
Uh, Martin, I, I, uh, with regard to the, the, the doctor uh, who was on earlier, um, you know, when he, he opened, I, I thought that he was saying, uh, and I could be mistaken, but uh, he was talking about how research uh, has pointed out that, that the, uh, the etiology uh, in terms of uh, 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 genetics uh, it seems to be about 50% of the problem, something like this. And uh, I wanted to get clarification on his, uh, on, on that, that statement, just in case I was confused, because, you know, uh, obviously, um, you know, empowering the sober self goes to great lengths to uh, say, and, and uh, as I've heard and understood, there's very little consensus in terms of uh, genetic factors uh, involved. And so, I, you know, unless I was uh, confused by, by what he was saying, um, you know, I, I would like to know if, if I was, uh, you know, out of whack on that, Martin, and what your, your thoughts might be with regard to what's in, in empowering. Well, that's a, a very, very good point that you, that you made. I also, when I heard him, um, filed away some thoughts uh, in the back of my mind, but, uh, you know, that's a, a kind of a minor issue in his talk. What most impressed me about him is that uh, he, on the one hand, he's a very mainline kind of addiction spokesperson. He buys all of it, uh, all, you know, AA works wonderfully, yeah, it's genetic, and it's your brain is fried on drugs and the whole the, the, all, all the mainline uh, thinking on it, he buys all of it. And uh, I may have quibbles with some of it. Uh, uh, I have quibbles with quite, quite a bit of it, but I appreciate the fact that uh, while he buys into all of it, he strongly sees the need for additional recovery roads. That he's a very mainline kind of guy who is reaching out and saying, even though we have this main line, it isn't enough. We need other lines, other roads. And uh, I like his uh, metaphors about it. There's a gym, okay? There's a, a gym where you do weightlifting, but that's not for everybody. There need to be some other kind of approaches to, to uh, bodybuilding as well. And I think that's very helpful uh, that somebody who is so conventional and legacy minded uh, about addiction recovery issues should be so strong and forthright about advocating for alternatives. I think that's very helpful. And to me, that's more important, much more important than any particular disagreements I might have with him about what the genetics research shows or what the effectiveness of AA really is and so on. Those are things that I don't wanna to push to the front and center what I do want to push to the front and center is his saying, we need more, we need more research. Uh, we need uh, that he appreciates the staying power that we've developed, that uh, we must be doing something right because we're still around after all these years. Uh, all of that is uh, very positive and uh, is what I take away from his talk. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you for sure. Th that those are the most important uh, uh, aspects, of course, I, I did, you know, um, you know, and I don't want to bring it to the forefront either, but I, I thought my ears were picking up sort of a, a bias towards uh, AA and, uh, you know, I kind of was uh, zoning out a little bit, but, uh, you know, at the end of it, I really wanted, what I wanted to ask him based on that was uh, the, the question um, more than anything uh, based on, you know, sort of the, the lack of genetic consensus in, in the scientific uh, uh, industry and uh, based on what I'd read, um, with regard to uh, Gabor Mate, I don't know if anybody knows Gabor Mate. He's a, he's a Canadian Hungarian doctor. I mean, he, he wrote the book, uh, bestseller, In the he Realm of Hungry Ghosts. He was a speaker at one of our oh. uh, Denver oh, okay. conventions while well back. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to point out and ask, you know, uh, his thoughts, the doctor's thoughts on what, what I clearly read in, in, uh, in the Realm of Hungry Ghosts and spoke a little bit to Gabor Mate on this. He said, I don't care what you say about genetics, addiction has nothing to do with genetics. It has to do with unqualified parenting and trauma in childhood. And I've taken some informal surveys over the years, you know, in different group meetings and just said, hey, what do you think about this? Unqualified parenting and trauma in childhood. And that's maybe why most of us are here. And all the time, hands would go up and sometimes eyebrows to, 
uh, maybe think about it for the first time and go, yeah, maybe I think that's maybe it. Thoughts? I'll offer a thought. I think that uh, every one of us in this group and in Life Ring throughout uh, has, as you have, Van, our own personal take on it. And I think that's maybe the most important part. Um, since we're in a uh, in the same boat, if you will, I think we'll have a different. Uh, there'll be so there'll be individual differing opinions as to the evidence for this or that. Um, and for me, what's been important is to have an, a personal narrative that makes sense to me. And you know, trying to find a consensus around. I, anything Mate said, anything Kelly said, um, anything Marty said, anything any of us said, there's good information everywhere. What is it that works for me to explain it to me? Now, I don't know if that makes a, a particular sense, but that's, that's what to me is workable. Trying to pin somebody down or any of us down as to um, specifics may not be really useful. That becomes uh, then some version of received wisdom, uh, the one true way. Uh, well, I, I think it's really good for science and for understanding and advancing the field, uh, for sure. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you're right, it's the uh, life frame's position for me has always been whatever works and whatever works is based on results, plain and simple. If somebody can prove something else uh, then I'm, I'm happy to hear it but I, I think we need to have the science and I think these various understandings are, are, are good things uh, at the end of the day to advance the actual science science of it all uh, yeah. that's my two cents I feel like the, the, the science behind the the origins of addiction are important um, to you know globally but um, for our context I was in Denver and, and heard Gabor Mate and what he said with me resonated way more than I expected it to. I was 100%, you know, with him on, I related to every single thing he said, but it would be very hard for me to imagine that everyone felt the same way or that, that his theories are applicable to everyone to that same extent. And at the end of the day, I feel like it's, it's not as important for my recovery to focus on the origin, but to focus on what are the solutions that uh, that work for me and that I can help others uh, reach for themselves. But still, the science is important, I think, globally to understand the origins. But our role, you know, as a recovery organization is really to focus on the solutions. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of my origin that plays into uh, my recovery, my personal recovery. I think at this point, Sue, you're in charge. I think Lisa I, had her hand up for something or something. Oh, okay. Anybody else in the room? Want to, uh, Chris? Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I was just going to say briefly, uh, in chat, I posted a link to a 2019 blog post by William White, uh, kind of he discusses addiction as not being a not being a single thing, it can be caused by genetics or trauma or other things. I think that's I think that's the concept that I found to be most useful. That's all. Thank you, Chris. I I just wanted to um I, you know it, it's interesting and I'm watching my life ring elders at work no offense meant to anyone but you know and how that that inclusive of of you know it, it, yes we can talk intellectually and we can debate and some things will ring true for one person maybe not as much for another the point is the solution and the support and the you know that's life ring but and I, and i'm so sorry but i was a few minutes late to when this started has have we heard from robert uh, Robert's not talking. <laughs> Robert doesn't want to talk. 
I, I'm Aww. sorry, Robert. I, I believe you. I believe you get you passed this over to me. So um, I would like to call on Robert. <laughs> Robert, okay. Steph, would you like to share? Um, since 2006, um, the last ring, 2006, uh, February, I think. Uh, not, you know, after numerous times in recovery, et cetera, et cetera. Formal recovery, not just quitting for a day or two, 90 days of recovery and then going out and going back and drinking again. Um, that was the last time I had a drink. Um, I remember going down, as Corolla had, had, had talked about, going down to the service center in Oakland for pizza, for um, uh, coming together uh, a convener, and she said it was the third Saturday of the month. Um, coming down there, talking to other conveners in the uh, from the Bay Area, and uh, having pizza afterwards. And we would do this every month. Uh, I, I it was two. It probably it was probably two thousand and eight, um, because two thousand six I had just gotten sober and I wasn't a convener yet, obviously. But I, I soon in six months I did become a convener. And anyway, um, I remember I disclosed the fact that I understood access a little bit, MS access. If you older individuals can remember that, that's an Office product, still with Office, in fact. Uh, it's a database thing. Um, and he was interested, um, Marty was, in finding somebody who could uh, do something with the database he had written. He had a uh, People of Life ring, I think was the title of the database. It did both uh, uh, contact information and uh, bookkeeping, uh, recorded sales, stuff like that. Um, and I opened, stupidly opened my mouth and from there it was downhill. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 2010, I was there in Denver. 2011, I was there. Uh, I think that was in Denver too. Uh, but Kathleen asked me to take over in 2011. I said I wasn't, I couldn't do it yet, but that I was preparing. I, you know, I had a job and everything else. I talked to my wife, and so it took took another year. In 2012, I did uh, um, take over as executive director, and Craig was there. Craig had moved down from uh, Port Angeles, Washington, down to he didn't. Uh, uh, by in Bay Area, he's renting a, a place in Berkeley. And for the next four or five years, is he here? Uh, it was five years, wasn't it? Seven, eight years? Uh, I lost track. You're muted. Uh, yeah. We yeah. worked together. He would work in the morning, and then he made an excuse he had to leave in the afternoon. Uh, but we were both and I was paid. I was part-time staff paid. He wasn't paid. He was purely volunteer. So, uh, of course, he had to go get his coffee, and that was fine. Uh, but we did. We talked a lot because we were developing stuff. We were literally developing how Lightring was going to work, and he was my mentor, and we just talked all this stuff through and, and got a plan of action together and then implemented it. And it was a series of putting out fires, all the time putting out fires. Uh, fortunately, most of them were just minor fires, but nevertheless, they had to be dealt with. And, uh, you know, so uh, it, I guess a culture was born at that point or something. You know, obviously, Marty had a lot of stuff. He had certainly had the written material. And, uh, you know, we were following along with that. And, Craig had been the first executive director, and I was tapping into him. And it was, a, I think, uh, for me, it was a very fruitful relationship. Uh, I learned a lot. And uh, considering my skill level, uh, Sue yells at me when I say this, but I am not at all, my skills do not, <laughs> um, do not belong with a nonprofit. But nevertheless, uh, one has to do what one does. and. Uh, we continued forth. And so that's it, Sue. Anything else, Sue? I do better with questions and answers. Oh, question. Comment. Um, <laughs> I, I would, I, I would.
would just like to say, you know, early pandemic, we had, what, four or five online meetings total. And Robert, I remember we were working on something, and he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm starting an online meeting, like, on Thursday morning or Friday morning. I'm like, okay, that's great. And then and then you said you were starting a second one, and I was like, well, what, what, why? And, <laughs> okay, I did not have your foresight, but you really got that ball rolling with all these online meetings. Those those early morning meetings got got it all started. Yep. And it also got new blood into the organization. Literally, it was uh, probably the best thing, maybe the only thing I ever did that uh, produced something of a, of a value. Uh, but it, um, yes, created a whole, uh, but half the people or more in this room are as a result of that. Um, and so we call it a good day, I guess. Yeah. Was this to see that unfold? Uh, out of not, nowhere, I, I mean, you can give Zoom a lot of the credit, but somebody had to set it all up and work out the details, and I think that was Robert. And, well, uh, I yes, as fast as I could. Of course, the Zoom, uh, Mark came on and has normalized things uh, quite a bit since then. So I kind of hand I this is I, I do stuff and hand it off. I try to find people I can hand hand off stuff to. Uh, because they do it a lot better than I do. Putting out fires is a good a, a, a good metaphor for uh, for the uh, successors to uh, new you know, We we uh, we all knew the organization was had to be had to grow. Uh, there was a need for it, and uh, and everybody was supportive of it. But none of us knew how to do it. Uh, so we put out fires while we learned, and uh, it, 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 it's brought us this far, somewhat to my astonishment, and uh, I hope it continues. And, you know, I, I don't want to leave this out. It's an integral part, and it, what is the organization should be? It's the board of directors. The board of directors set policy, set the tone of the organization. All the executive director does is just implement that to the best of his or her ability but it is the board who you're going to vote for tomorrow or at least delegates uh they are what the bread and butter of the organization this is coming from a guy who constantly told me that when i thought of something to do to suggested going to the board with it he said no nah, don't go to the board just do it shh, shh. <laughs> Dude, that's our little secret robert everybody knows it <laughs> well, I took a little liberty here and there, you know. We just turned a blonde eye. <laughs> Gotta move things forward. You can't wait six months. Anyway. I, think it was, I think it was Craig that said to me, sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than ask permission. Uh, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> So there it is. Sue, where are you? Oh, there you are. I would just like to say, Kathy has her hand up. Kathy? Oh. I just have a quick question. Um, so you see the light ring behind me. Um, and I guess I would uh, ask this to Marty. Um, how did you come up with the idea of the symbol life ring? I mean, I love it. Oh. I love the idea, but how did you come up with it? I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you asking how the name came up or how the symbol came up after the name? This, the, yeah, but both. How did you come up with the, the idea of using the symbol um, of life ring? To be Good part question. of- question. Name, to be the name of of uh, this program. Good question. Lost in the midst of time. Uh, it may have had something to do with, uh, you know, we we came out. A lot of us came out of SOS. I mean, a lot of people came out of AA, but some people came out of SOS. And SOS has it's kind of a nautical thing. You know, you're drowning in the water, 
and so you need something to help you not drown and so life ring how that exactly happened i don't remember it's lost in the midst of time but uh, and i may have looked at five or six different things and searched them on the internet to see whether somebody already had grabbed it and this one was available and so we took it and um after the name then the symbol was you know no brainer just had to go on the web and look at 15,000 pictures of life rings <laughs> to find one that seemed like the right one and adapted it and oh we had a cartoonist from ireland that did a cartoon of a life ring that we used for a while and then um, modified it updated it and so forth and so forth the way that people that companies do to update update their image but the, 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 that was the basic idea was that life ring was something to save your life when you're drowning at sea just that simple and also we liked the the ring idea because uh, all life ring meetings at that time and maybe still today meet in a circle so it's a ring and it's a ring that helps you live life and da 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 da, da, da. it's all very uh, straightforward the and, uh, only problem with the with the life ring as mark will point out is you buy a life ring you got to get four bands you, so you, have to re you have to get four bands there are no life rings with three bands they're all well that was our originality. <laughs> yes. that was our originality we made a life ring with three bands so variety the, yeah so, it's trademarked that way each of the have bands you, is one of the essence has the has the uh First generation seen what what uh, we had we have a, a woman on the board does graph does uh, art. I was wondering if y'all had a chance to see what she did for to commemorate the twenty fifth year. Have you seen that? Uh, probably not because I can't think right. I can't jump right you, away to what you. If you don't mind, I'll just put it up right quick because I think you'll you? I think you'll like it. All right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that yeah, nice? I see it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I just want—I wanted to say that you know it, it's definitely near and dear to our hearts. So, Paula, Paula is the graphic designer behind that. You did a great job. Well, thank you, Paula. She did a lot of new stuff for the brochures as well. She's on a national tour, is she not? Didn't? Uh... Yeah, she's an artist. She has an art show in the East Coast right now. The but Smithsonian. But she gave a lot of her time for um, life ring documents and posters and stuff. So uh, yeah, she's done a great job getting us to kind of upgrade our uh, graphics. Okay, I'm signing off. You Any know, parting just, words from the first generation? <laughs> live I, I live never long had... and prosper or something? No. I'm sorry. I have, is, is Byron still here? Maybe he uh, I think he left. Darn it. I've always wanted to say thank you in person. <laughs> oh, well, another day. Uh, this has been really awesome. Anybody else got any questions or shall we just take this and, and, uh, and feel warm and fuzzy for the rest of the day? That sounds good. Can yeah, I, I can I suggest um, what the way we end our meetings here in the Tampa Bay area? Please. The traditional way everybody gets up and leaves <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. it's wonderful to see everyone i want to give a virtual hug to tom shelley without him <laughs> this organization would never have been born he, we really owe him just a ton and i'm so glad to see him here looking healthy and happy glad to see you upright and taking nourishment martin and <laughs> That's very I generous. I take a lot of, of nourishment. <laughs> <laughs> my problem is I take too much nourishment. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm with you, my friend. <laughs> All right. Lovely. Thank you for organizing this, uh, whoever organized it. Sue. It Robert. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. Sue, Sue and Robert. Thank well, you, thank so you much. everyone. <laughs> the board of directors. It was a, a, a group effort. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> You're all amazing. Thank you. Bye, all. Thanks. Thank you so much, all y'all. Bye. Bye. Good to see faces all.